Today's session is on succinimethonium. It's a depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drug, commonly used in rapid sequence intubation, and that's for people who need to go to theatre or for those that need ventilation on the intensive care unit. We're going to have a look at the presentation, the mechanism of action, its usages, the effects and side effects, and then we'll have a little look at the pharmacokinetics of sucks. Presentation-wise, it's a colorless clear solution. It's kept in the fridge. It's kept at 4 degrees C. Its concentration is 50 milligrams per ml, but by standard it comes in a 2 ml ampule, which means you get 100 milligrams of sucks, and that's the standard rapid sequence intubation dose of sucks. As you see from the diagram on the screen now, it's actually two acetylcholine molecules joined together, and that plays a significant role in its mechanism of action. Because it's got the two um, acetylcholine molecules joined together, it mimics that of acetylcholine, it binds nicotinic receptors on the cell surface and leads to depolarization of the membrane and then deep profound muscle relaxation. There are no hydrolyzing enzymes for sucks within the neuromuscular junction and a lot of it as we see in the pharmacokinetic section gets hydrolyzed before it gets there. Um, it sits around on the receptor for about 10 minutes and then dissociates or gets broken down and therefore it's a very short acting uh, depolarizing neuromuscular drug. Once it's sat on the receptor, what it does is it binds and blocks um, sodium channels and that leads to the profound and deep neuromuscular relaxation. This is all part of phase one. Um, phase two is a concept where if you give further sucks after the initial dose, you generally start to see the effects mimicking those of non-depolarizing neuromuscular drugs. When we think about the usage of sucks, as I've said, rapid sequence intubation is the most common use. Um, but it's also used for laryngospasm in um, theatre as well. The effects are, as we've mentioned, you get depolarization and fasciculation, which can lead to myalgia. You then get muscle relaxation. You can get cardiovascular effects in the form of arrhythmias. Um, you can get sinus nodal bradycardias, which are very common in kids, and it's something to be aware of when using sucks in, in paediatric cases. You can get a hyperkalemia. This is due to... Um, the activation and the um, stimulation of the muscle cells. This is more so important in people with CKD who've got high potassiums, but also patients who've got burns. When you get burns injuries, the, um, the skin and the cells start to reproliferate with fetal acetylcholine receptors, so you've got a higher abundance, so you've got a high propensity to produce uh, more potassium into the circulation and hyperkalemia, and that can be for up to 18 months post your burns injury. You also have to be wary of patients with neuromuscular disorders as well for a similar set of reasons. Other side effects or effects of sucks, you can get malignant hyperpyrexia and you can get sucks apnea. Two big enough things to have discussions on their own and we'll look at those in other days. The kinetics point of view of sucks, sucks is essentially rapidly hydrolyzed by plasma or pseudocolonesterases. Um, only about 20% of the actual sucks you inject gets to the neuromuscular junction. Um, it's rapidly hydrolyzed down into choline and um, then into succinic acid and choline on their own. Um, and then only about, because it's so rapidly metabolized, about 10% of it gets excreted into the urine.